Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where every Wednesday we get together and discuss Japanese art, history, particularly prints and paintings. Uh, today's uh, Woodblock Wednesday is featuring one uh, Woodblock print artist. Uh, he's a Sosaku Hanga artist. His name is Takumi Shinagawa. Uh, and he was uh, a student of Onchi's, um, more a uh, disciple than a student because he brought a lot of his own ideas uh, to bear and actually produced his own artwork with its own very distinctive spirit and perspective. Uh, but before we get into that, I just wanted to introduce a new format for Woodblock Wednesday. I usually went live on Facebook and that was okay, but the problem is the connections to Facebook um, aren't always great and the quality of my videos have been lacking. So I've decided to do uh, a recorded uh, video or pre-recorded video and upload it on Facebook as well as my Instagram um, account. So you'll be seeing um, more videos coming from me uh, in a different format. You'll notice the the timestamp on top there. That's part of a program that I'm using for this video and I can't remove it so it is what it is. Uh, but uh, hopefully the quality of the videos will be uh, much better than what I've been doing uh, recently. So you could really appreciate the artwork uh, I'd love to share with you. Uh, the other thing uh, is that for some of you, uh, you might actually be new to this channel. And the reason for that is I, I never really shared these videos on Instagram, partly because Facebook Live won't let you do that. So this will be my first video on my Instagram accounts or collectingjapaneseprint.com's Instagram account. So, you know, uh, welcome if this is your first time with me. Uh, and I encourage you to go to my website, collectingjapaneseprints.com, and look at the previous videos that I've uh, posted. They're all part of the Facebook Live uh, uh, pro broadcasting from previous weeks, but there's quite a bit of videos there now, so I encourage you to have a look. And so without further ado, let's go to the table and have a look at some Japanese prints by Takumi Shinagawa. So before we get into it, I just wanted to kind of uh, kind of put the camera out so you could see the table full of these uh, wonderful prints. There is one design that I've uh, discussed previously in another Whitblock Wednesday, um, and of course you'll see that video on my website. And I will touch upon that design partly because it's such a seminal work for Shinagawa. But I wanted to highlight some other designs that are very different uh, prints that you probably wouldn't come across. So this this first one um, is by again by Takumi Shinagawa, and this was done circa 1948, uh, 1950. This is certainly a print that was done w with his association with Onchi. And you can kind of see the Onchi-esque kind of qualities in the printing. There's this really soft, expressive quality uh, throughout, almost sort of wet-like uh, in Onchi's prints. It also reads like a Sakino portrait as well, partly because Sakino um, acquired that sort of style from Onchi. But uh, the interesting thing about this print is that uh, Shinagawa was... Um, a big fan of Picasso. And Shinagawa was really interested in Western painting, particularly Picasso. And this design is actually based on a much larger scale uh, painting by, by Picasso. And this is a harlequin, uh, um, and it's a, a boy clown, um, and it's done really well. I mean, as, as a reworking of a Picasso design, it, it, it's really quite true to the original. Um, the likeness of this design translated into woodblock prints is, is great. But what Sh Shinagawa has done is he's actually sort of just focused his subject primarily on this, uh, this boy. 
And whereas Picasso's painting is much larger and there's a, uh, another figure involved and, and a lot more going on. Um, and in this, this work, it's really a study of the, the portrait of this harlequin, but it's also a study of what is possible in woodblock prints. So at this time, you know, Shinagawa or even, you know, stepping back and, and looking at all of the Sosakuhanga artists, they were interested in producing artwork that was um, interesting to them. And they had a lot of experiments, partly, you know, experiments in producing work that satisfied them, but also ones that, you know, could, could um, explore different uh, techniques uh, and uh, different effects. And in this particular print, there's this wonderful sense of light that's emanating from the right into the design. And you could see the, the work, the, the play of light that's actually throughout the work. Now that I'm using a different program, you'll be able to see the detail in a, in a much better, um, clearer way. So I'm going to zoom in and you're going to see how beautifully printed this work is. Now, uh, this is something I'd like to show collectors uh, and clients when they come over. I always like to sh show the the print's um, verso the, or the, the back of the print. And the reason why is that you, you could really see the bleed through and the printing um, through the print um, on, the, on the back. And you just see how the, how the ink has saturated or the pigment has saturated through the paper. The next uh, design that I have uh, is one that I recently sold. So it's being shipped out um, in the next day or so. And this particular print, again by Shinagawa, is of a design that's sort of inspired by Picasso, though I can't attribute it to a specific Picasso painting. Um, one of the things that Picasso liked to do is sort of marry two faces into each other to create one portrait. And you see here you have a figure looking to the left um, and then one to look to the right. And together uh, in, in a union, you, you, they sort of create one face, which is really interesting. Uh, and um, as Picasso's go, <laughs> he, he, he really distorted the face in different ways. You know, you could just think of the portraits, many portraits of Dora Maar um, that were done in the 40s. Well, this one, you know, has that kind of effect. But Shinagawa, in some ways, uh, has kept uh, that spirit of experimentation blending two faces, but then he softened the, the design in a way that only woodblocks could do. It's a warmth that comes from the carving and the printing. And there's a really wonderful, um, expressive, emotional um, quality that you, you pick up immediately. So I'm gonna zoom in so you could see the work. This this print is uh, not titled. As uh, this one also is not titled. This one is dated 1951. So we have the year where this one I think is a little bit earlier, for, as early as 48, 46 possibly, uh, but no later than 1950. Uh, moving along, we have another portrait here by um, Shinagawa, and in this print, it's interesting, some of his designs are signed Takumi, and we see his signature here. Uh, here's his elongated um, signature, which is actually printed um, out. It's not in cursive. And his earliest 
work from this period, from the 40s and 50s, um, all through the 50s, he never signed it in cursive. It was always uh, printed out like this. And I'll show you another version of it there. And I'll show you, I'll show it to you again in a couple other prints. And that's important. There are certain designs that are, were reprinted and there's a cursive signature. Those signatures are later. They were most likely done in the late sixties, early seventies. Now in this design, this is a, a work done in a period, uh, that he was just working in kind of a brown sepia, uh, tone. He, he's known to have produced a handful of these, uh, these prints in this color. And in this particular, uh, design, uh, we have a bust here that's sitting on a table with shells. And of course, this design is all about shadow and about creating this wonderful effect of light and shadow. Um, I, and then it, it's almost done in a way that is, it's almost like sculpture in itself, in itself. It's elements of the design being carved out with light um, and, and color. So it's, it's a really wonderful design, something that you rarely see uh, and, and it, it very indicative of this, this period for this artist. So now I'll zoom in so you could, could see a bit better. Now, moving on to this next one is a design that I've already discussed in a previous Woodblock Wednesday. And, of course, I encourage you to uh, have a look at that video. Um, and in, in this particular case, what I will say about this design is that this is, this is uniquely Shinagawa's um, sort of combination of abstraction or Picasso-like qualities with his own um, style. So here we, we, we have an interesting sort of, um, there's two elements in this design that are sort of at, at play in, in an almost opposing kind of ways. We have here a portrait and you can see the outline of the face. There's a nose, the mouth and the chin here. Um, and it's, the portrait is of a kabuki actor. At least that's the title of the print. And then we have these two forms here. There's another one here, and there, there's this really interesting pulsing quality, and these two forms sort of jet out from the, the design, and this eye almost seems to sort of pop out uh, as part of this form. But when you read it, uh, when you sit here and look at it for a moment, and you see the profile, the eye goes back into its place, and this reads more like a light uh, coming in um, from from onto the stage where the the performer is um, is there and performing. So it's a really interesting work. It, it it has this strong element of abstraction, and yet rooted in something that's um, definitely um, a portrait um, that's recognizable after you look at it. I also love the colors. They're very rich. There's this deep purple, a darker blue that's printed over a black, and then of course a black. There are later, there's a slightly later version of this design where the purple is not as pronounced. And um, there's another version of it where it's it's really dark and I would say it's almost black. But this is the earliest version of this design which is, you know, really powerful and quite stunning. I'm going to zoom in. You could see the signature here. Again, it's in the, um, in his distinctive handwriting. This one's dated 1953. And I'm going to reach over and get the last work to discuss. Um, I'll move this one up. And we have here, this is a, a horizontal, I can almost call it a landscape. It's done in almost a Salvador Dali kind of um, style, 
where there's these figures, um, and they're they're almost figures that almost look like pieces of fish or shells or things are out of the ocean, and they're laying out in this field of red, and there's these shadows. And the, the, the title of this is Figures at Midday. And so you could kind of see maybe the heat of the, the sun melting these or creating these shadows. Um, it's a very interesting uh, work. And this, this is one that's, you know, purely abstract. Um, though I'm, I'm sort of creating a story or narrative around these figures, they're really uh, actually quite abstract. And in this time, he was just experimenting with abstraction. So this print is 1949. It's a bit earlier uh, than some of the others that are here. And you could see Shinagawa's interest, not just in, in portraiture, um, and then sort of a, a, a synthesis of a Picasso or international style of, uh, of sort of forms that Picasso created and other artists sort of picked up and, and started using. But there's a lot of styles here uh, that sort of show the artist's um, ability to create artwork in woodblock prints um, in, in multiple styles. I mean, so you could really see his talent uh, shining through these, these prints. I have uh, a few more, of, you know, that I could have shown you, but this is a nice group that shows the diversity of his style. So I'm going to zoom in on all of the prints so you could see them one last time. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining me on Woodblock, Woodblock Wednesday. Uh, and today we discuss uh, Sosaku Hanga artist Takumi Shinagawa. And I probably should have mentioned at the beginning that Sosaku Hanga artists created their artwork uh, in a very uh, innovative and unique way in Japan. They carved their own prints and printed their own designs. And of course, the entire work was conceived by them alone. Whereas in Shinhanga, um, the artist worked with a collaborative in a in a collaborative process with the publisher and printers and woodblock carvers uh, in the same way that Edo period prints were produced. So for for this particular artist, all of these distinctive uh, designs done in in different styles really highlighted his ability to produce. Um, uh, a wonderful array of artwork in woodblock prints. And, and really, this is a great uh, sample, not just for the artist, but, but for the movement. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of these Sosaku Hanga prints are, were produced in very limited uh, numbers. And so they're really quite rare and rarely seen in the marketplace. So collectors may not even know that they exist and or may not know what they are when they encounter them. So this was a good sampling of a, an artist that I'm quite fond of, uh, Takumi Shinagawa. And so I hope you enjoyed our conversation today. And I also hope that the quality of the video is much uh, better. And so we're gonna be moving forward with this sort of a system and look out for many more videos in the coming weeks. So this is Elias Martin from CollectingJapanesePrints.com signing, signing off and I wanna thank you again for joining me today on Woodblock Wednesday. See you next time.